is the deadliest month yet for U.S. and international troops in Afghanistan. At least 79 have died. This as the U.S. changes its top command. Out with General Stanley McChrystal, who resigns after making disparaging remarks about the administration to the media. In with U.S. Central Command Chief David Petraeus, who was McChrystal's boss. President Obama says the policy in Afghanistan will not change. General Petraeus understands that strategy because he helped shape it. And my expectation is that he will be outstanding in implementing it. Experts credit Petraeus with a successful counterinsurgency strategy in Iraq. Last month, the four-star general said he was well aware of the task ahead. As was the case in Iraq, the reality is that everything in Afghanistan is hard. It's hard all the time, and it typically gets harder before it gets easier. Petraeus himself has a hands-on style taking risks to walk among the people in conflict areas. He has also said it is important for a commander to be brutally honest about how the war effort is going. Some analysts predict the command change will stall advances in Afghanistan until Petraeus takes over. Secretary of Defense Robert Gates. No one, be they adversaries or friends, or especially our troops, should misinterpret these personnel changes as a slackening of this government's commitment to the mission in Afghanistan. Petraeus's task, counterinsurgency, involves military action, but it also relies on civilian relationships to succeed. Experts say it is crucial for the military and the U.S. ambassador to speak with one voice. Johns Hopkins professor Tom Keeney served 30 years in the U.S. Air Force. He says General McChrystal never developed a bond with U.S. Ambassador Carl Eikenberry. Keeney says Petraeus, meanwhile, cultivated a rapport with Iraqi officials, which benefited the cause. His relationship with the political entities was not just cordial, but he pushed them constantly to make modifications, to make changes. So a good relationship is important, but having influence over what that leader is going to do is even more important. With this change, some say General Petraeus will develop the credentials of a future presidential candidate. There's even a website called Petraeus 2012, but the general denies any political ambitions. It has happened in the past, with World War II General Dwight D. Eisenhower ascending to the presidency. Michael O'Hanlon is with the Brookings Institution. Obviously Eisenhower, obviously Ulysses Grant. Uh, there's a time-honored tradition of seeing generals as powerful leaders that the nation rallies around. For Petraeus, the appointment could be a legacy changer. To date, he's been known for his success in Iraq. Now, he faces a new test, one that he admits won't be an easy one. Carolyn Persuti, VOA News.